we've already seen the range rule of thumb, which said if you add two standard deviations from the mean and subtract two standard deviations from the mean, we get the what's quote unquote the usual range. So anything outside of that would be unusual in terms of observations for a sample. Now what we want to look at what's called the empirical rule. The empirical rule. And the key here is we're no longer just looking at the mean and standard deviation of a random set, but we know a little bit more information. This question reads, after conducting our study of teenagers and the number of calories they consume, which is the previous question that we saw, we find that the, daddy, the data is approximately normally distributed. That's the key. We already saw that it had a mean of 2,000 and a standard deviation of 150. Given this information, we want to be able to answer the following questions. A good practice that I would get, my, get into is writing down the information that we know. So we, we're talking about a sample, and the sample mean is 2,000, so it might be a good habit to get into to just write down that the sample mean is 2,000 and the sample standard deviation is equal to 150. Okay, so what observations or what percent of the observations would we expect to fall between one standard deviation of the mean. I guess it would be better to say, would we expect between one standard deviation of the mean from both sides, or within one standard deviation of the mean? The key here is knowing that it's approximately normal. We've been seeing that things that are approximately normal have this bell-shaped curve. And it's not such a bad curve. I'm not so good at that, so that's good. We know that with this bell-shaped curve, and this is starting to kind of get into what we're going to talk about next or in, in future weeks, but with this bell-shaped curve, what we would expect is that the mean to be in the middle. And what we can think about is the area of this curve, the area of this bell-shaped, is going to be equivalent to, if I were to shade all of this, it is going to account for 100% of the data. And that should make sense. You know, if you add up all the columns of a histogram, this is kind of like a histogram. If you add up all the columns of a histogram, you get all of the values, right? You get the total number of values. So if we think about the area or shading in this entire curve, this entire bell here, we would have 100% of the values. So if I go one standard deviation to the right of the mean, here's plus one standard deviation, so plus one S. And if I go minus one S, so if I subtract one standard deviation, and I consider all the values that lie within one standard deviation. What percent would we expect to fall within one standard deviation? Well, with this bell curve, with anything that's normally distributed, the empirical rule tells us we would expect approximately 68%, 68%, approximately 68% of the data values fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So here's the mean in the middle one standard deviation in both directions, all the values between those two standard deviations, we would expect that to account for 68% of the data. The key here again is that we're talking about data that is normally distributed or approximately normal. Now, what if we include more values? So what if we go a little bit further? If we go a little bit further away from the mean. So now we're not talking about the just one standard deviation, but now we're talking about going two standard deviations. So here again, we have the mean in the middle. Here's, I'm just going to write plus one, and over here I have minus one. We're subtracting one standard deviation. But now we're going a little bit further. So now we're over here, plus two s. And we went one more standard deviation away. This is now minus two s. So what we're looking for is what data, or what percent of the data, would we expect to fall within this range? Remember, this is the usual range that we saw on the last page, minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations. This was the usual range. And what we associate with usual is this area here is going to be associated with 95% of the data. We would expect approximately 95% of the data to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. Think about it this way. Let's say we had an observation that was further, than, uh, further away than two standard deviations. Remember in that last example, we saw that 1,500 calories was further away from the mean than two standard deviations, and it was unusual. 
So if we were thinking about this example up here, 1500 was down here. It was further away. This, okay, over here is outside of this range. We would call that statistically significant. That is a statistically significant observation because it's further away. It's unusual because it's outside of that two standard deviation range. And all of this is going to come back multiple times throughout this course. And then finally, we want to look at what if we actually go three standard deviations. So I'll draw one more bell curve here, and I'm going to draw the mean in the middle yet again. But now I'm not going, here's the mean, I'm not going one, I'm not going two, I'm going three standard deviations away. So three S. And I'm not going one, two, I'm going three standard deviations in the other direction. So I'm subtracting three values of the standard deviations. So in this case, I would subtract 150, another 150, another 150. I would be subtracting a total of 450. So now, if I shade in everything in between here, what percent of the values would I expect to fall within minus 3 and plus 3? Well, this would be approximately 99.7%. So this is just for any, any particular data that would be approximately normal, this works. The last thing I want to do is to actually go back and plug the information in for this problem. So up above, we know the mean is 2,000. We know the standard deviation is 150. Let's figure out the range of values that would be between approximately 68% of the values. So if I take the mean and I add one standard deviation, and I take the mean and I subtract one standard deviation, I'm going to get 2150 for the upper limit, and I'm going to subtract, I'm going to get 1850 for the lower limit. So what I would expect, 68% of the observations to be between these two numbers. We actually already did this problem, right? The usual range plus two standard deviations. If I add two standard deviations and I subtract two standard deviations, we already did this. This was, remember, 1,700 all the way up to 2,300. But now what the final one, if I add three standard deviations and I subtract three standard deviations, well, I would add another 150, I get 2,450. And in this case, I would subtract another 150, so I would get 1,550. So I would expect 99.9... 99.7% of the values of the observations to be between these two. And it shouldn't be 1,500, it should be 1,550. There we go. Between 24, uh, 1,550 and 2,450. Remember, this is slightly different than the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb just used the words usual and unusual. It didn't attach any percentages to it. And the reason why is because in those cases, we didn't know if it was a bell-shaped curve. We just, know, we just knew that a particular um, observation would be normal, and our, I'm sorry, normal isn't the right word, but usual or unusual, depending on the number of standard deviations away. But once we know that it's approximately normal, then we can start to attach some of these, per, these percentages, the percent of the probability, or excuse me, the percent of values that fall within that range. And the reason why is because if it's approximately normal, it follows this bell-shaped curve. And these things, these areas, is moving, this is hinting at what we're going to be calculating for future weeks.